Hey, 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 everybody. So it's Coach Williams here, Cassandra Williams of Cassandra Williams Enterprise, your victory coach and the founder of Wise Wives Build. And normally I'm out here concerning my business and things like that. Um, but today I am coming out to talk to you about something a little more personal, right? It's taken me a few days to kind of get my, um, get, listen, get my whole life together. Okay. Um, and I wanted to, um, it's more than a post would suffice. The post would be too long. So hopefully the video is going to be long, but you can at least hear um, and come back and, you know, things like that. But I'm going to take my time with it um, and be obedient to God. So if you see my shirt right now, this is by Dr. Nancy Dozier. It says, I am a miracle. Um, last year, so bringing you up to this year, I've got to give you a little bit of backstory, okay? Last year, 2023, the Great Collide, we were, we were at um, Stone Mountain and beautiful hotel. And we had this long hallway and me and my roommate were walking down the hallway, walking to our room. And I said, God, I was in so much pain. And I said, God, you're going to, I said, you're going to heal me. And he said, you're already healed. You just got to walk it out. And I said, okay. And I said, every every night that we walked down that hallway, it got better and better. And I was like, God, okay, just tell me what I need to do. And um, got home and we made, um, I made appointments. So I started going to the chiropractor and I started going to um, assisted stretching and doing some things like that. And I said, okay. So I was managing my pain. Also, they were giving me terminology for certain things, right? Going to the chiropractor, I learned that um, from, the, from the time I was born, one of my legs was slightly shorter than the other, which is not uncommon for most people in the, uh, most Americans, okay? It's not uncommon. But also for me, my hips rotate. So when my hips rotate out of um, socket or out of balance, um, the distance that that slight link difference becomes maybe more like um, almost um, an inch, an inch and a quarter, right? Which means now I'm literally, you know, and most of you, when you saw me walk, that it wasn't just kind of a slight sway. It was uh, more of me trying to pull my leg. And that's because a lot of times, y'all, I was in pain. I didn't say anything. But um, when I get out of alignment, whenever I get that far out of alignment, it causes back pain. It causes knee pain, leg pain. Those that are closest to me, um, I think they knew, but a lot of people didn't. They never would know how much pain I really was in. And so I was doing all of these things. I was doing what I knew to do. I was like, okay, let me get the suede off. Let me do that, this, that, the other. And so for a year, I committed to the process of my health, right? And so God was like, and so it was maintainable. You know, I was maintaining everything. And so two weeks prior, to go into the Great Collide, I just knew I had to be there. And so I was getting ready to go to the Great Collide. And I said, okay, God, um, I was doing no sugar. I've done vegetarian. We've been doing raw, you know, whatever it took to get the weight off and to learn what was affecting my body, right? And I said, God, okay, I don't have any inflammation. But two weeks prior to the Great Collide, guess what happened? my weight started to go back up. I'm like, what in the world is going on? So my, my weight started back going up. I started having all of these menopause symptoms, all of these things. And I'm like, and when I say pain, I was in so much pain and nothing was helping. And I'm like, you got to be kidding me because guess what? The great collide was the day for me. The Great Collide was D-Day. That, that was the day I wanted to walk back in there. 
without pain. That was the day I wanted to walk back in there to say, God, last year, you told me I was healed and I've done everything that you told me to do. And you said, I, I knew what he said. And so I was doing what I could do. And I'm like, God, it didn't work. You know, it, it, it didn't work, right? And so, you know, so I was like, wait, did I do all of this for nothing, right? I, and, and during this video, I'm going to be very transparent because I want you not only to see what God was doing, but I want you to see what I had to come through here. I want, I want, I'm giving you a realistic view of what had transpired. Okay. And so as I went, um, I said, okay. So I said, God, I promise I'm going to make, and I'm, if you see me looking down, I had to write it out. And so I will, so I don't want to miss anything. Okay. And so I said, okay, Lord, as I was preparing for the great collide, I said, God, I want to make a deposit. I said, I'm going to go and I'm going to receive, but whatever you want me to deposit into the atmosphere, I'm willing to do that too. I said, I, I, I don't want to just be in the room to receive. I want to be in the room to deposit. And so where whoever you have for me to speak to, hug, say hello to, smile at, whatever it is, I'm going to do that. And I'm going to make my deposits, right? And so we get to the Great Collide. VIP day is amazing. I'm still, you know, we're walking around. We're doing what we do. And I'm like, oh, we... I said, it's a little bit of pain, but it's, it's manageable. It's okay. I'm, I'm good, right? And my roommate was like, girl, slow down, All right? Because like I said, when it's really bad, I, you know, I wobble, okay? Let's just call it what it was. And for me, transparent moment, I don't think I've ever said this out loud, but Dr. Nancy called it out when she said there's a place of shame that was a place of shame for me that for much of my life, it was my norm. So it wasn't an issue, but the more I got around other people and saw people and people questioned me, like, why do you walk like that? And different things like that. It became, I just was like, I did, which means if I hated that, I hated a part of me. And so it was like, I was like, oh my God. So there were opportunities I did not take because it required me to be out front. I've done a lot of great things, but there were a lot of other things I did not do because I did not want people to see me like that, right? So back to going back to the great, the, um, the great collide. And I said, okay, I said, Lord, I said, we're going, I want to make my deposits into the atmosphere and things of that nature. And I had, I said, but I have one request, just one. I said, I want to run. I said, when this has always been there, but I played basketball. I did, I lived a full life. I, I did not have all of this pain and all of this stuff going on. I said, so even if you don't take the limp, because listen, Jacob wrestled with an angel and had a limp. I said, even if you don't take the limp, I want to run before I leave that place. And I wasn't going to make it happen. I needed God to do it for me. Because like I said, I was in pain. I was... It was not, it's not, it wasn't something I could physically do myself because I could feel it, right? I, I could feel it out of alignment. And it was just like, I didn't want to fall. I didn't want to hurt myself even more by trying to do it. It had to be God, okay? So we get into this, the morning services um, on Friday. Um, VIP, listen. Okay, I'm I'm going to pause right here. If there is VIP, get in VIP. Get get in the room. Those ladies and, and so Friday Friday it was women. 
um, Friday night was Pastor Don, even his testimony. They all set the stage for my miracle. They all set the stage because they started talking about breaking generational curses. They, they talked about partnering with God. They talked about rest. They talked about, you know, being at a place where you're mad with God. I've been there. I've been there, right? Because one of the things with the way my hips were formed and the things that were going on, that was the reason that um, they were so concerned about my husband and I um, having children. We have an amazing son, 18, Christian, um, but we got him through adoption because they said, if you don't make it to the hospital, you could die because your hips are not formed properly to... Um, naturally push out um, a baby and you could die if you don't make it to the hospital. Crazy me was like, they said it's an 80% chance you're not going to make it. I heard 20% chance God was going to be faithful, right? God knew best. <laughs> so here we are. So here we are at age 50 at the Great Collide. And we go through um, Saturday it's time. That's all I got to say. It, it's time. And God moved mightily, um, even in the day session. So listen, my body was exhausted. Okay. Cause I want to, I want you to understand. I want you to understand the road to the collide. And then once I got there, I was tired that day, that night. I was exhausted. I was sitting in service and I was like, okay, I, I love um, Dr. Nancy and her ministry and I'm going to be transparent, okay? I said, Lord, I might have to leave early because I'm exhausted. I literally could barely keep my eyes open is how tired I was. I was tired. My, I, my, my, um, my legs and my hips, I was hurting, right? I was hurting and I was tired. And I was like, God, okay. So when Dr. Nancy got up, she said, some of you, <clears throat> she said, listen, so let me, let me go back. Nothing went right. <laughs> I, I, there was a lot of stuff I wanted to do. Didn't get to do a whole lot of that stuff, right? So Dr. Nancy got up and so she said, um, some of you ask God to heal you, but you never ask God for a miracle. And that thing hit me so hard. I said, you know what? I did. I did ask you for healing. I said, God, I want a miracle. <laughs> In that moment, I said, I want a miracle. So as she begins to talk and um, she started calling out certain things that God was going to heal in the service and stuff. And she called out um, inverted bones and she was like, he's going to do debt cancellation. I received that too. Um, you know, and all of these things that were going to take place. And I said, I said, I don't know what that is. And I'll look it up, but that that's not it. I said, that's not it. I said, okay. I said, God, I said, when she starts to pray, if you want me to go up there, she has to say something concerning rotating hips or something concerning the hips. So I know that you're talking to me. I didn't say it to anybody else. These are conversations. I told God I wanted to run. I, I, I came into agreement and said, I want a miracle. And then I said, okay, if you want me to go up there, I need you. Because here's the thing, y'all. When I'm not one of those that just runs to the altar. But when you run, when you go to the altar for certain things, it's very personal. It's a vulnerable place and so as she ministered I mean she had an amazing word from from God of what God wanted to do and on, on that particular day and along with everything that she was saying about Adar right the month of Adar and with everything that she was saying um in her thing my phone went off had went off earlier that day and this was the same day that my grandmother passed away right so this was the anniversary 
of her passing. And so I was thinking about as they were talking about breaking generational curses. And I said, God, this is this, this, and this, this whole thing with these hips. And, you know, cause we we're big girls. Um, most people in my family are, we big girls. And now we get ready to stand up and all of us be, you know, rubbing our legs and stuff like that. So I said, the devil is a liar. We going to be healed. Right. And as I was sitting there and she began to call forth, right. And so she was, she prayed for people that wanted to get married. And then she called for, you know, people that wanted to have um, a baby. And I was praising God because that was a sensitive, that used to be a sensitive spot for me, right? God just taught, saw fit to bless me in a different way, right? It was still a miracle, God, y'all. It was still a miracle, right? And so I was praising God because that's sensitive for me. And I I, I, be pray, I pray for people in that area because the enemy will try to take you out with that infertility, right? And so right after that, she said, if you have problems with hip joints, you know, with your hips, um, your hip socket, something with your hip socket. And I was like, oh, wait. She said hips. And so I was coming, two ladies, one lady came from the middle aisle, another lady came down the left aisle. I was coming down the right. She prayed for um, both of those ladies and she walked away. And I was left standing there. <laughs> So right here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk to y'all a little bit about being willing to wait, okay? Because I'm standing here in a room full of people. Remember, I talked about being vulnerable, right? So I'm standing here in a room full of people. She walks away. And so in that moment, you don't understand what's going on. At least I didn't. In, in that moment, I was having to talk myself down because I'm like, did she not see me? No, she see me. Okay. So I settled in and I said, Father, maybe she's not supposed to pray for me. Maybe I'm just supposed to be up here in this atmosphere and you're going to do it all by yourself. I'll receive it. However you want to heal me, I'm going to, uh, you know, however you want to do it, that's going to be fine. And she kept talking. And she kept talking and she would go in through example after example after example. And I began to feel better, right? So um, my leg began to shake, right? And it was like, it was twitching a little bit. And I'm like, okay. And I said, okay, God. I said, I know that's you. And so I stood there and I began to kind of bend, up, bend a little bit because now where all the muscles were tight like this, they were beginning to loosen up. So I was like, okay. And so I was like, okay, I, I, I feel I feel a little better, you know, okay, God, all right. And so I was like, she's moving on with the service. Let me leave. Let me leave the altar. And I went to turn and my mentor and her husband, Apostle Lewis and Apostle Kimberly Jones, I didn't realize they were so close. As I went to turn to walk away, I heard him on this side say, stay right there. I heard her on this side say, don't move. I was like, okay. So I stood there. From the time I went to the altar, I couldn't see. It was like a veil was put over my eyes. All I could deal with was my thoughts. I couldn't see anybody. I couldn't even see Dr. Nancy. I couldn't see the room. I couldn't see anything in the room. I could hear. Listen, I could hear, but I could not see. And as she began to do testimony after testimony after testimony after testimony, I was like, God, I believe. So I stood there and I said, okay, I won't move. Whatever you're going to do. And I'm like, okay, if she's going to go on with the service, I'm just going to stand right here. I'm supposed to stand right here. And then she came back and she laid hands. And as I went out, it was like a surge went through me. Like I could literally feel God doing surgery. And I remember her saying, get her up, get her up sit her in a chair and I couldn't stand up on my own and she said sit her in a chair 
And I don't even know who was holding my legs or anything. I remember them holding my legs and I was just kind of laid out in the chair. But I could feel from my lower back all the way down. Like I felt the anointing all over me, but I felt what God was doing in my lower back because the pressure was leaving. And then into, into my legs. And then they said, stand her up and walk her. And so they walked me around because I, could, I couldn't walk by myself. I was just so in the spirit. And so they walked me around. And the whole time we were walking, I said, this is good, God, but I want to run. want to run. And I said, okay, I'll take it. But I want, I asked you for something specific. I want to run. I'm not going to cry. I want to run. And as we got back to the front, she said, now finish it, God. She said, it's not what it was. And it wasn't. She said, now finish it. And when I got up, I was down there a minute. <laughs> I'll admit, I was down there a minute. I didn't get up because God was doing something. And when I got up, there was just a little bit of pressure. And she began to pray for sciatic, sciatica. Um, I had used to work for a company um, called Xerox. And I had hurt my back um, moving paper boxes and things like that. Um I no longer had the pain that pulled all the way down in my legs, but in the middle of my back, the muscles would tighten up so tight that it was hard for me to move. And when she called it out and I began to bend, what she told um, Elder Cheryl to put her hand in my back and she prayed for it. And then as I began to bend, all the pain left. I had had that particular pain since 2000. That's 24 years. That that would flare up <laughs> and would hurt, would, would cause so much excruciating. If anybody's ever had it, it's excruciating pain. Because sometimes you just have to go and you just be like, just let me lay in the floor because you got to stretch it out and you got to do all these things and you learn to live with it and that's what I did I had learned to live with it and I began to walk and as I walked and I began to stretch and I, I began to just kind of kick my leg out and I was like, okay. And now I, I now I know, you know how you stretch or you run? I, I was stretching before <laughs> I ran. And I forgot the words they were said. I, I it was something about watch him work. And she was like, we don't mind waiting, watch him work. And all I heard was. And I got halfway, halfway. And I stopped and I was like, wait, I'm doing it. And, God, and I heard somebody say, don't stop. And God said, finish it. Remember, I, this is the year of the finisher, right? I had went halfway around the room already and I stopped. And I wanted to stay back there. And God was like, no, finish it. So I had to keep going the whole way. And I got back up to the front. And I had ran the whole way.
แล้วไปเจ้า And of course, we dance, we praise, we 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 did all of that. And when I got ready to leave, um, one of my dear sisters came up and she hugged me and she said. My prayer for you is that you that I'm praying against muscle memory, and I had studied that. I understood what she was saying because I studied it earlier part, lat latter part of last year. And what muscle memory is is your muscles have memory, even with your weight. It has um. It has memory, so your body likes to flow in a certain way. And so, if it remember, if it's something causes it pain, it remembers that. So, if it feels that pain, it immediately alters to do what needs to be done so that you don't feel that anymore, right? And so, if you it's used to you walking a certain way, it's used to you doing a certain thing, it automatically does that. And so, you have to retrain your muscles, right? Catch that in the spirit. Um, And so when I got ready to leave, God said, "Don't put your shoes on." He said, "Carry your shoes. Don't put your shoes on till you get to the lobby. And as you get ready to go, because the floor changes, it was carpet all the way up through, up till we got to the lobby. Then it turned to tile, and then um, once we got off the elevator, it turns back into carpet. So I went to the furthest chair, so that all I had to do was go from the chair." To the elevator and then get off. From the chair to the elevator, I put those shoes back on and it hurt so bad. I immediately reverted back to the way I walked because my shoes had conformed to my posture. And I got upstairs and I got off the elevator and I had to sit back down. And she's like, "What's you know?" My friend's like, "What's wrong?" I said, "I can't wear these shoes." So I had to take the shoes back off, walk to the room, and she said, "That's crazy." I said, "What?" She said, "It's apparent the way you're walking now and the way you walk with those shoes." So I was like, "Well, I got a pair of flip flops in the in the room. Let me see if I can wear those." Couldn't wear those. Sunday service. Sunday service, I was in socks. I couldn't wear shoes. So before I got ready to go, get in the car, I put the flip flops on. I put on, I put them, I put the flip flops on. Went to the, um, got in the car so that I could at least drive home. And then, but I didn't go home. My my first stop was not home, y'all. My first stop was the shoe store. Had to go buy new shoes because all of my shoes were from the old season, and I said, "God, I want to be a good steward over the gift of healing that you've given me. This miracle that you've given me, I will not allow my body." To revert back, that hurts. Now, was there some discomfort? Absolutely. All day yesterday, I took some time. I had to process through everything. I'm a coach. Y'all gonna hear more about this, right? This is just getting it all out. But I'm a coach, so you know you're gonna walk this journey out with me, and I'm gonna. You know, come back out and tell you about the lessons I've learned. But one of the things I had to go to God for, and I said, "God, I said, okay." I said, "How do I maintain this? I'm not going to bed." I said, "How do I maintain this?" And the first thing he said, he said, "You got to go get all new shoes." He said, "Go get new shoes." He said, "Change your bed, switch your mattress." 
the place that you normally would lay in has conformed to the way your body was. So you got to turn the mattress so that you're on a firm place. And if that don't work, you're just going to have to get a new mattress. So that it doesn't, ah, so it doesn't remember how your body used to be. Because laying in the same place, going back to the same, listen, when you get a miracle, listen, you have to change everything. I want you to think about it, right? When we look at the signs, the miracles, and the wonders in the Bible, I did a whole study on it the end of the year. It was a whole setup, okay? When you look at all of those people and all of the miracles that they got went on the other side, we normally don't see the other side, but for me now in this place, I have a whole new, listen, have a whole new mission that if you want a miracle, baby, you got to be able to maintain that. I tell y'all all the time, I want you to build the life of your dreams and then be able to live in it. Listen, when you change, when God, listen, when God restores your marriage, you got to be able to look at him differently. You, you got to be able to treat him differently. When God restores in your body, when you have limbs that grow out, that's a whole new thing. You got to learn how to walk. You got to learn how to sleep. Your posture changes. I noticed now, I said my shoulders, I stand up straight. I have to, sometimes I have to watch my balance because I'm used to standing a certain way. And now I have to be like, wait, he topple over. Wait, I have to walk slow because I'd be like, wait, hold on. And I have to be intentional. Why? Because I have muscles that have never been used. And yesterday I spent most of the day and I said, God, I said, I'm not in pain. So I would do a little bit and I'd sit down. I'd do a little bit and I'd sit down. And I said, but I'm not going to stay down. I said, so I do a little bit and I'd sit down and let my muscles, because my muscles were going through what, what they call muscle fatigue. I was having muscle spasms because my muscles was like, girl. You done did a whole lot over the last couple of days, but I did not want them to go back to where they were. So I would stretch them a little bit and I would get up and I would do a little bit and then I would sit back down. And last night I was like, I was like, God, what is this that I feel? And I said, he said, remember the first time you went to the chiropractor? I said, yes. I said, that's what this feels like. I said, this feels like the first time that I went through an alignment. God. And my heart's cry is that God, I just want to I just want to be a good steward over what you've given me. So for all of you that will continue on this journey um, with me, I went back and watched the video last night and I cried all over, <laughs> cried all over again. I'm going to go back and watch it again to see what else that I did um, miss. I'm sure there are people that can fill in some of the blanks for me. But one of the things I want to leave with you um, is that I learned throughout this experience. Don't be away. Don't be afraid to wait on God. God's timing is perfect, right? This was 50 years in the making for me. This was not overnight. There was a year's worth of preparation that I've been doing with my health and with everything um, that was for now, right? So now I got to put all of that stuff that I learned last year, put it into play now, because that's going to be the thing that carries me. Because I'm not going back, y'all. Because if I go back and start doing the things that I used to do, 
if I go back into all the places, if I start wearing those same shoes, if I start sleeping in that same spot, if if I sit the way that I used to sit, now, now I find myself, you know, making sure I feel like I have something that is pushing me back, that my shoulders, you know, where I used to kind of, no, God is like, no, stand up, walk straight, be, be intentional about your steps because now I'm having to retrain my body after the miracle. The miracle, listen, sometimes y'all, can I be honest? We, we get stuck at the miracle. There's a whole new life on the other side. Think of that blind man, right? That Jesus healed, healed his sight. And he was like, okay. And he told me, he said, now, all right, go home. Don't go, don't go back that way. Go home now, okay? And he went home. The sensory overload of being able to see everything, of trying to take it all in, getting home to actually be able to see his house, to see, you know, if he was married, if not, you know, to see all of these things and all of these people, it's a whole new way of life. And we don't always talk about, we, we talk about the miracle, but I'm going to have, I'm going to help y'all see after the miracle. So when you see me, this, I, I bought this shirt last year. I've been wearing it for a year, but can I tell you that it's not just a t-shirt anymore. It's a declaration for me now. I am a miracle. I, I experienced a miracle. I experienced this body going back to the re the, the original intent in which God created it to function. So y'all, y'all just bear with me that I may have a little as I'm adjusting <laughs> to all it is of you know gathering my equilibrium. But God is faithful. He's so faithful. And growing up, I used to hear Shirley Caesar. We used to hear the song, you're next in line for a miracle. So when I danced and I shouted a year ago for the, for the person that they were sitting there and her limbs began to grow. And I said, God, you're going to heal me too. I didn't know. I... Had they not been behind me, I would have walked away. I would have left the altar. Because at that moment, I didn't know she was building faith in the room. For my miracle. See, I've, I've been in the room and I've had faith with other people. as the strong friend, as the per encourager, as the coach, the victory coach, as the pusher. We show up and we do it for everybody else. And one of my, um, Pastor Jackie came over to me. She said, the day is for you. And that was earlier in the day. And she was like, cause I said, I've never had so much ministry. I was, I ain't had floor ministry in a long time where every time, you know, I was like, I kept, I was like, if, if I wasn't in the floor, somebody was coming over and they were pouring into me. When I say I left the great collide full to overflowing, I am full to overflowing. And I'm trying to keep this voice together, y'all, so that I can finish this. But you'll see more videos. You'll see more things. Um, I'm not going to apologize because it's long. I hope that you have been able to listen in its entirety. But I just want to say thank you to Prophetess um, Carla Clark, Pastor Don Clark. Listen, welcome back, sir. Welcome back um, to Dr. Nancy, to Elder Cheryl, to <laughs> Apostle Kimberly and Apostle Lewis Jones. Um, these are people, uh, Pastor Tamika Cord, Elder Shonda Holmes. These are people that have walked with me. 
that have poured into me, that have pushed me spiritually and now physically. <laughs> um, Dr. Nancy, for your obedience to hear God and to show up in the earth. Um, so yeah, y'all, that's my that's my testimony. Um, yeah, I did it. I did it. And I'm a walking, breathing miracle. Y'all thought y'all couldn't make me doubt him, baby. You can't make me doubt him now, okay? Um, Life, life, yeah, life. Uh, I'll come back out and talk about, you know, some other things. But listen, be where you're supposed to be doing what you're supposed to be doing. Because you never know when your miracle is going to show up. All right. Um, I love y'all. Like, uh, for real, for real. And thank you for listening um, to my testimony, okay? Um, but yeah, follow me, um, Cassandra Williams, um, www.thecassandrawilliams.com. We've combined everything into one place um, now, the way God originally, the original intent, the way God originally intended it to be. Um, so that you can see my progress. Um, I'm gonna, um, I'm documenting, right? We, we talk about um, documented uh, miracles. People in the room literally saw my leg extend that inch, right? And that's why God told me, listen, God told me not to go to the chiropractor before I went. Why? Because he wanted it at the state. He wanted to heal me at the worst part of it. So it couldn't be said that, oh, well, she went to the chiropractor. Oh, it was because she lost all this weight. Oh, it was because, no, God did it, y'all. God did it. And those that were in the room saw it. I felt it. And he's no respect. Just keep trusting him. Keep following him. And I love you all. Let me get off here. Um, but I promise I'll come back to update you guys even more. Um, today, I feel, um, so yesterday we had muscle fatigue, um, muscle spasms, um, things like that. But I was still able to move around. Today, um, that is less. So I'm going to do um, some stretching um, and some things like that because these muscles ain't used to doing what they're doing. So guess what? We don't have to get them there, right? So now this right side has to catch up with the left side so that they will both be able to function at the same capacity. How do I know that? Because we was already working on it before. So now we just got to let's go right so i love you all have an amazing day thank you for listening um and listen leave me comments those of you that were in the room please fill in any blanks <laughs> tell your testimony of my experience as you know um what did you experience in the room what did you see um all of that um, i would love to hear from you as well so be blessed talk to you later